So do we have any call-ins or emails or anything this week? We do. We do have some call-ins. Eggs. Uh, Sherry thing. Share, share, and like. Share and share alike. Sweet. Oh, come on. Stop it. There we go. Okay. Hit us with some sweet call ins. Interestingly enough, Dragon Magazine 48 was the first issue of Dragon I ever owned, given to me by a my cousin actually because it had a top secret adventure in it at the time top secret was one of the games i was playing very cool yeah i don't think i ever owned a dragon magazine that old because except in digital form um especially with the cd that they um what did they call that? Where they there was a CD with all of the um, uh, two hundred and fifty. Yeah, the first two fifty. Uh, yeah, I um, I think one of the first ones I owned was a random one somewhere in the fifties or sixties. But I know in the sixties or late early seventies, there was the um, Ed Greenwood did that thing on the Nine Hells where he went through and talked about the Dukes below each Archdevil's layer, and I was utterly fascinated by it. Thought it was pretty cool. That's when I got way into it. Yeah, looking at the older uh, magazines, it's uh, one, they're shorter, and two, um, you could tell that they, it was early days. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was some, definitely some good stuff, though. I mean, good I, stuff, yeah. I've seen some good stuff in the early days, for sure, yeah. And that was Jason from uh -huh. um, Nerds RPG Variety Cast. That was his singular uh, voicemail for this episode. Oh, okay. Hey, this is Taylor of Cleric Square Ringmail calling in on my drive home from the grocery store thinking about spells and how powerful they may be. Talking about Mud Sword uh, with introducing Saver Suck and giving it a try. I think giving it a try is fair because the power of a spell in older school systems is counterbalanced by how few you get. It's very dying earthy. You have uh, an extreme power, and a very effective power, but it's limited. You only can do so many of them, and you have to manage whether you're going to spend that now or save it for a rainier day. I am reminded of running a group of coworkers through the Lichway. Spoilers to follow. It, near the beginning of the dungeon, there is a fake magician. He's been imprisoned here because the real magician figured out his horse hawk, and uh, he's talks as he bluffs his way through not knowing any spells. That worked phenomenally with my group of people. Uh, some most of my party was either old school or no school. That is, this was their first experience playing, but. I was able to bluff that fake magician's way into their good graces, and they did not expend any resources trying to take him down for fear of the resources he might have at his disposal to take them down in return. That is so satisfying. So oh, I imagine. I imagine. <laughs> He's got a little bit. The moral of the story that I've been trying to get to, I like that kind of mechanic. I like having spells that can be or feel OP because it introduces more thinking. It introduces more opportunity for role play where the party may not just dive headfirst into stab, stab, stab. So them's my two coppers. Delve on, guys. I think you experienced that a little bit at the game Saturday because you kept saying, I got this spell, but I can't use it. I can't use it. I didn't purposely, I don't even think about, you know, the adventure we had was mostly fighting a lot of slimes and those sort of oozes. And Joe had, did you have sleep memorized? Sleep. Yeah. So that was kind of useless. And um, you didn't get to use, you know, do many spe much spell casting. But I mean, um, I don't think that was one where you were worried about how many you had. You just realized, crap, it won't do any good. 
I was only able to use it on the one dude. Oh, yes, the guy with the claw. Yeah. 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 And it works out. I think he's, I'm kind of with Taylor right now. I, I want to play it out. I don't want to be nerfing any spells as far as like making them much weaker. I don't mind changing them to fit that, the kind of feel that I want. But like, you know, you mentioned sleep last week. Sleep's pretty powerful. Well, yes. I'm just gonna, let's just live with it for a while. Let's see how it goes. And, and you used it on the party. Correct. Oh, well, it's good for the goose, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey there, guys. It's John here from the Red Dice Diaries, just listening to your narrative slash dice rolling episode. And I've got to say, yeah, I'm pretty much in agreement when it comes to preferring the dice to determine things, you know, as a bit of an arbiter of chance and randomness. I forget who it was that said it, but I'm, I always remember a quote when things like this come up, where it's like, the story of a game is just whatever happens in the game. And it always seems to me, for right or wrong, that narrative games are more sort of focused on ensuring that a certain story type is created. Nothing wrong with that if you like that, but for me, the story is just whatever happens in the game. If you play characters or get killed by the dragon, then that's how the story goes. And the dice tend to lead to that result. So that's what I prefer. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the episode, guys. Take it easy. I'll catch you soon. Yeah, I have to agree because I know for many years in my mind, I always struggled because I wanted this cool epic tale you know, with the highs and lows of almost like a novel or a movie. And you made some a comment last week, Joe, that I thought was really good. It's really neither one of those things. And what makes D&D kind of fun is you just don't know. And it's great that the DM also doesn't know. It's fun when I'm surprised as like, you know, we'll talk about much for what you guys just tried to do with that ooze at the end. I was really shocked and I found it hilarious. Um, and I wasn't, we'll talk about it. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, I... um yeah uh when when you're uh left with dice to decide the fate of a particular action or whatever you need to roll with the dice and just roll yep. with how, whatever it comes out with whatever it rolls yep. you roll with whatever it'll be it'll be yep yeah Hey there, guys. It's John here again from the Red Dice Diaries. Um, yeah, when you're talking about um, wilderness encounters and whether they had levels in older versions of D&D, the sort of random encounter charts used to be based on the dungeon level, whereas the wilderness encounter charts weren't based on levels, so you could come across a lot more dangerous stuff in the wilderness. But also, I think you make a valid point. You know, you're not exactly just going to turn around a corner in a forest and be like, oh, shit, a great white dragon. What's that doing there? Then... But also in the original sort of older versions of D&D, they had roles to determine like how sort of distant the encounter was when it took place. And obviously there's expected to be a bit of GM adjudication. So the GM would sort of roll the encounter. You find out it's like this greater dragon or whatever. You then have to sort of work out how to fit that in and how the player characters come across it. But yeah, the wilderness could be a dangerous place. Anyway, take it easy, guys. I'll catch you later. Right. Yeah. Um a lot of wilderness tables they'll just have the monster listed in number appearing instead of a, a bit, little bit better setup some suggested ones at the very least and that distance from is is a good one yeah and i've seen like you know on the table i remember when i was younger i mean i was just like because when all we cared about was fighting right fighting was the whole game so yeah when we did wilderness i mean i didn't do it on, i really didn't do it on purpose but i'd be like well i wrote a pack of werewolves um says four to 16 okay that's what it is <laughs> it'd be like oh look 12 we're we're second level yep roll initiative i mean I, I didn't even think about it i remember i remember the rules that john talked about where there were rules for adjudicating how far away and stuff and i simply said eh, i don't want to do with that i'm just going to do whatever i want which is not bad if my attitude wasn't let's just fight yeah yeah <laughs> whatever i want means they're right there yeah and i wasn't like and to be honest with you i wasn't i mean i admit it i've got some you know took some unholy delight in killing joe's characters and a few other people's at times but i wasn't always like that most of the time it was just that's what i thought should happen i thought well if we're playing dnd you should fight the monsters <laughs> so right. but i don't think that's <laughs> necessarily um 
the best deal. You know, you know, sure. there's uh, some evolution uh, over time on how you play for, for, for us, for sure. I don't know about anybody else out there. If please give us uh, drop us a line, email, uh, call us at the, at on anchor with how you may have changed your play style over time. When we were, yeah. when we first played, we were all like this in our little group. You know, we were mercenary. We just oh. in the door, take the stuff, don't really care. You go into town and slap around everybody because you're just dumb NPCs and stuff like that. We're and, eighth level. You can't be tougher than us. I've read the DMG. Guards are only for first or second level. That's that's the lieutenants. We can kick the crap out of all you guys. And you right. literally could if you follow the rules. Right. So no. um yeah, we don't do that now. Mm -mm. I mean, with a if you're playing a heroic uh, character, they're not going to be slapping around people. <laughs> no, no, and like yeah. I remember, like even when you're playing a pal, and it's like well, you said it before, an NPC is like, "No, I'm not going to do that." Are you getting lippy with me? Yeah. <laughs> do you know who I am? <laughs> and and you know, on the other side, I didn't help much because you know I usually your wilderness was deadly and so when you got to the town and you were higher, higher level you're like well let's flex our muscle because i know we're not going to get to in the adventure randy's going to really push us to the limit so yeah i mean i kind of understand it i do remember though thinking even early on i was like man these guys are, you're supposed to be good guys now i didn't help incur i didn't have things happen to encourage that often early on meaning reward you for being kind reward you for being helpful you know get people that like you and want to do things for you and so you guys were you know roughnecks and come in and push people around and took what you wanted <laughs> right right it it was like i think i've made this comparison it was like the wwf <laughs> it really know, was yep you know we just walked around like we were you know, you know, wrestlers, and you should know who we are, and give us our respect. And if not, we'll throw you over the turnbuckle. <laughs> Pile drive you when you come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I got my hero quest um, stuff today. Okay, I wasn't sure what you meant in that line for sure by hero quest. If you meant yeah. there's like a Kickstarter or something. Oh, this is a Pulse, which is a Kickstarter for Hasbro that I did last year early, like just when the pandemic was starting to get annoying. I don't know why and, you're giving Hasbro any money, but go ahead. Right. Fair enough. Well, I'll tell you what it was. It was a game. Well, ha Hero Quest is an old board game that everybody's, you know, talks about how wonderful it is. I never owned it, never played it. All our friends talked about it. And at that time, my intention was to buy that and play that with my grandson to lead him into D&D. Mm -hmm. And they had a pretty sweet deal. And I said, I know it's Hasbro, but what the heck, I'll buy it. It's Hero Quest. And I thought I would try it. And it came in. It's the mythic tier. Um, it's like 190 bones or so. But dude, have you you ought to look and see how much it's selling for on eBay? Well, sure. It's ridiculous. It starts at about five or five or six hundred dollars. I mean, I could Ooh, literally turn around money. I could just about triple my money. And that's like, and there's plenty of those get bids. There was one for 600 bucks. The first bid was 637. <laughs> and I was like, wow. But the truth is, you're not going to get all those together. Those were for Kickstarters, the mythic tier kick. You're not going to get that in the store. They're going to be broken down into pieces that you have to pay for. I wouldn't think it'd be 630 bucks though. Probably not. For the core set and three or four expansions. But, you know, board games are high end board games are 100 bucks, I think, right. at least. So. Yeah, this is one of the things about um, Kickstarter, and there's something called FOMO, uh, the fear of missing out. Yes. And uh, uh, I don't suffer from it. I mean, not yeah, really. I do, I do I, a little. I do. A little bit, yeah. You are you you can be a completionist. I can't. That's my weakness. I'm a yeah. completionist more than something. I mean, I mean, I just look at stuff and I'm like, well, I'm never going to use that. I don't really have any attachment to it. Uh, there are some things if I had some spare cash that I would probably want to get for nostalgia right. reasons. Sure. But um, uh, I see a Kickstarter. It has to really like um, I'm really waiting for um, Eric July to start his uh, Indiegogo. Yes. So as soon as he starts his and I have some extra money, I'll, I'll talk to the wife and hopefully be able to back him up. Yeah, um, I hope you can do at least a little bit, Joe. I think it'd yeah. be great if we're both backing him up. Yeah, that'll be cool. 
but he's uh and i would like to back up some other comic skate guys too sure sure but uh i don't have anything spare right now fair enough i mean yeah i mean honestly i just getting a little more picky about what i even want to buy anymore um one of our friends decided to back mothership and that sounded intriguing but then i realized mothership is just aliens you know yeah and yeah. it's kind of woke the company's kind of woke kinda. but even forget that <laughs> e well whatever even forget that yeah. um forget the woke part i was like i don't want to spend even something like 60 bucks to do the decent so i was like no i've got aliens i don't need them no um so yeah i just i'm getting i'm getting a little pickier and also i think part of it's because we are working however slowly on our own rpg and so in the end if we really like it which we better because we're making it um i don't know how many games i mean i could i can understand how game designers probably are a lot could possibly be a lot pickier because sure. like i kind of i've made a game that i really like why do i want to buy all this other crap plus right. i'm getting old mm -hmm. i just want to play what i want to play i don't want to spend tons of money anymore i've spent plenty thousands of dollars in my life right so hey write a note down for playing in the mud about mm -hmm. the um idea i texted you the other day oh yes okay and we can talk about that since you okay, were thinking so, it was kind of thin yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um whiskey so but but here request how you got oh, yeah. it you got it i do have it i haven't opened it up Oh, um, you haven't yeah. opened it up. Okay. No. Uh, all, a lot of our friends, four or five of us Kickstarter, they're all getting their Mythic tier box. I think uh, one of them got it yesterday, and me and our boy uh, Tim, uh, Tim S, has gotten ours today, I believe. He said he was going to, and I think Patrick's getting his pretty soon, tomorrow or the end of the week. And I'll be honest with you, I'm going to try to play it with them. Uh, I don't know. If I hang on to it for another year and it's still crazy expensive on eBay, I may sell it might as well i mean what the heck that's a lot that's a whole lot of money if someone's can... willing to give up 500 bucks and if i needed the base game i'll just go buy it my you know, grandson wants to play that one day and i get a chance to do it i'll just go buy the basic game from the store sure yeah all right well uh loaf is coming you know what i never looked at that article to see what the okay. miniature looked like it doesn't look if you click on there you'll see it's selling it for 70 bucks now i will say depending on its size that's probably a good price okay that's not that that's not the figure oh it's not there's no way that looks like a um digital mock-up so it right. may still look like that once it's printed but that looks i mean that's what it, it does not look like an actual figure to me that looks okay that looks like a digital thing fair enough but if it is if it's really close to that that looks pretty nice i'm gonna buy it that's definitely because I told you I only buy pre-painted minis now, and I tend to only because I have so many of them. I tend to only buy the special ones. Now compare this Demon Queen to Jubilex. Okay, now mm -hmm. you're I'm tempting me. Jubilex looks like dog poop. Both looking pretty sweet. I wonder. I mean, I'd like to see a little more. Oh, she's even got little spiders on her. Yeah, I, I wonder how big it, it is. Looks like that. Yeah. Well, I think they're saying. Uh, does it say there? uh as many as a oh is a D, D magic the gathering tie-in how is oh because they have d right they have magic the gathering D, D type they have a setting for D, D now in magic the gathering so i guess they're connected which honestly that's a smart move i think that's a smart move well just be prepared for it not to look precisely like this correct and perhaps be prepared to be very disappointed but when i see that initial mock-up i have to admit i'm going like yeah I'm down with that. That looks good. So check out the link uh, that we provide. And uh, I would love to hear people's opinions on that particular mini. That is very, very um, uh, tasty, in my opinion. Looks good. Much better than that stupid Jubilex. And much more much more reasonably, reasonably priced than the freaking Terrask. Yeah, so. it's still $70 for one figure. It's just, I'm not doing it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm a little more willing to spend it um so did you check the other ones out guy gax and arneson minis yeah I, yeah i didn't i didn't note whether that they are for sale yet right Did they just come with the book uh, no these feature on the cover um and now you can have them for 12.99 um now that's reasonable yeah well they're, well they're unpainted metals oh, and 
Yeah, there you go. There you go. Unpainted metals. I still may get them because, you know, that's a kind of a nostalgia thing. Well, we can all get them in, in, in a strong arm pad into uh, painting them for us. Yeah, yeah. We need to get we need to get Pat in a headlock and you hold him down and make him paint them. Right. I'm going to be, I asked for his book for Christmas, so I'm hoping to get that Game Wizards. That's about, I watched a video from, I don't know if you know Greyhawk Grognard on YouTube. No, mm -mm. he's an interesting cat. Um, he does uh, older fella, and he did a review of the book, and it sounds pretty interesting. It's about the lawsuit that split Gygax and Arneson, and more details. And John Peterson does it, and so he's the guy that did playing at the world. He, he does. He's we've we've actually used several of his articles. Right, dude, dude does research. He's a historian. He doesn't. He gets you know first first articles. He doesn't. What's it called in a research first publications or first sources he doesn't mess around so i imagine it's pretty accurate and it just sounds interesting to me i'd love to hear how it really went down and it's and from what this guy said neither one of them come out smelling like roses that aren't sending guy gex both were a little bit buttholeish about the whole deal they're, they're just dudes they're right just exactly. guys just people 100 so I mean, I mean i'm not mad at anybody i'm just saying i know there are people that move into certain camps and say it's all gygax it's all arneson i mean let's be real it's got to be both of them and we you both know step. somebody that practically would probably kiss gygax's feet if he got a chance so <laughs> yes we do <laughs> you know of him mm -hmm. not know him mm -hmm. so, anyway what do you think what is this so i had to Look a couple of times at this last one. D and D Battle for Beyond is a star-studded new actual play series. So let me say off right up front, I don't know any of those people. Me either. That doesn't mean they're not popular on no, some level. Be. I looked up um the one fella. Well, I, I started looking up all of them, but it seems like only the um oh where is I have it? There it is. Ah. It's quite a diverse cast. Oh yeah, because <laughs> you don't have it's to. It's going to have to be. Um, what's his name? So the most notable guy in the whole thing, yeah, is uh, the Brennan Lee Mulligan. He Brennan has Lee he Mulligan. has a, a fairly sizable Twitter following at the very least. He's oh, the okay. guy in the back you can barely see his head. Oh, the white guy. Yeah, the white they, guy. Should, yeah. they should stick him further back. He should be yeah, down yeah. on the ground. The other ones, the way they notice note them here, yeah. Is, one is uh, LA based actress Josephine McAdam. Okay, I don't with know. no credits, you know, you can't look her up in anything. So <laughs> she's an actress. There's a gaming producer. I don't know how they're a star. Uh, yeah, voice actor can be, but they're usually yeah. fairly obscure. And uh, then some, and uh, then a two or three of them are. Um, already actual play folks that are oh okay that's what they are and but you know, the rest of them are not and then you know this whole the um the art title of the article is D, &D battle for beyond is a star-studded new actual play series right one they gotta lose that star-studded word that's that's fairly yeah. patriarchal <laughs> how is that patriarchal stud <gasps> oh my i mean God. really well you know what i'm white and i don't, don't even recognize my own whiteness and my inherent uh biases so clearly i need to be forgiven for not recognizing that no you haven't done the work so no <laughs> I haven't done the work. you're right dude i haven't that mm -hmm. makes me feel guilty sometimes you know i'll stay up at night for like one two seconds fearing fearing and worrying about that right well uh but apart from apart from that uh, nonsense, it says they're they're star studded. No, they're they're not stars. No, they're not. That's no. that's the thing. I was these are I mean, look. They could be phenomenal voice actors as far as you know, actual player, even real. I mean, I know there's. I know, I've heard. I'm sure there would be in in a field such any kind of artistic field. Yeah. Talent doesn't make you famous. You can be incredible. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. there are actors that are better than Johnny Depp. In fact, I would bet a paycheck. There's right. actors that are better than Johnny Depp that will never be in a movie. Right. There's a, so, there's a lot. There's um, some some of it is talent. Some of it is being the right place at the right time. So luck, um, persistence, um, yeah. 
and there's intel, a lot of different intel is part intel. of it yeah but there's there's a and, and then there's um how you look yep have the right look have the right look it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be like model quality good looking because there's plenty of folks on tv that are not that it's just right. if do you have the right look for what they're looking for right but um Right. There's a lot of there's you a might lot of get a chance to display your talents and that can move you on forward. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, I mean, sure, it's it's a, an actual play that has the name of Battle for Beyond, D D Beyond, whatever. I don't know if that's supposed to, if that's supposed to be connected to D D Beyond. It is, it is. It's backed by D D Beyond. Oh, okay. So well, of you know, course they're gonna put part of their name in there, whatever. It's stupid. But truth of the well, truth of the matter is, that's just a that's a new well, let's call it new few years old field where you actually make you know critical role recently made the nine million bucks on Twitch or whatever. I don't give a crap. Good no. for them. Yeah. Good for them. And if these people make millions of dollars, good for them. Sure. I just I just I can't get into it. I don't even know. Right. And to me, it's it's somewhere between actual role playing. And just performance and that's okay i'm not knocking it but it's not really just playing D. &D. it's not it's so perform it's performing at playing D, &D. right so <clears throat> the reason i even brought it because i brought this one up to you yeah um, and i think josh brought it up to me so thank you josh if you did oh, i can't gosh. um no it's necessarily the show itself because i could care less correct you know, knock yourself out, battle for beyond, do good. Yeah, good luck. Uh, I'm not going to watch it because actual plays make me sleepy. And yep. um, uh, what, zero interest. But um, the star studded part just made me kind of <laughs> roll my eyes. And then I, I was like, oh, who wrote this? It's on Polygon. So obviously, they're <laughs> some, they're authorities unto themselves. So, yeah, of course they are. Yeah. So when yeah. I, I, I read it, and it's a short article with, you know, nothing to it. Except <laughs> Big nothing burger. Listing out their names. Yeah. And that's about it. And then they they um, posted a tweet. Oh. And, um, well, while Brennan Lee Mulligan retweeted it and got a bunch of likes and whatnot because he has a fair amount of followers. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first looked at it, okay, so it's, it's gotten bigger since then. Okay. When I first, when I first looked at the tweet, it only had one like and one comment, mm -hmm. but now there's, there's more to it than that. So, oh, sure. That I was, mean, dude, there's clearly lots. I mean, critical role, I think they have millions of fans. So, but they're that's... clearly leaning on this Brennan guy's popularity because oh, okay. yeah, because on the tweet, it's just a, a gif of him in various poses and, you know, who cares, but apparently he's got enough popularity that it's driving a little bit of this. Yeah. And apparently it's just not, it's just not us. I mean, we don't it's not us. This is I'm not the uh, audience. I would, I would think, I wouldn't even call critical role star studded. No, it's not. And that, cause I mean, the only one in there that I know is Matt Mercer, and that's because he's a gamer and I'm a gamer and he's kind of his names bounced around. I don't know if any of them would be known by anybody that doesn't even. I mean, for example, if you have Tom Brady on your show. That's a star. Yeah. Your wife knows Tom Brady, right. even though she doesn't watch football. My wife knows Tom Brady. Now, she probably still thinks he plays for the Patriots. That's beside the point. The point <laughs> is, I mean, the point is she knows him. When Peyton Manning played, she knows him. LeBron right. James, these are stars. Yeah. Not just sports stars. Johnny Depp. People know them. Right. Okay. So um, yeah, I think it's we use, we throw those we throw those monikers around way too much, I think. I mean, because right. well, when, when we make Mud Sword, are they going to say uh, the new RPG by the, by the star studded authors? No, <laughs> they nope. shouldn't because they we're shouldn't. not. They should not. These two bozos from Michigan made a stupid RPG ripoff D and D. Please right. buy it. <laughs> but when when this was posted, <laughs> at the time they posted it, to, down uh, the very end of the article, it said fans are already expressing their excitement online by saying this lineup is everything. One person posted that. 
and there was only the one post there wasn't any <laughs> no likes or anything so i was like this guy or girl or whatever everything this is everything joe i, I can't know. believe it i don't i'm not even talking about the, that i'm talking about the way that this person wrote it up in their article as if <laughs> there was anything going on at the time and there wasn't fan a fan expressed <laughs> their excitement a <laughs> Everyone else is not. And you know what? It's probably going to be gangbusters. I'm sure they're going to do great. They may. They may not. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I wonder how long can this be support? You know, that's a good, interesting discussion. How long can this critical role, the critical role bubble has to burst, in my opinion? It could go on. It may not. Uh, do you, you know, to be fair, though, of, I also thought Magic the Gathering's bubble was going to burst. So who am yeah, I? Yeah. I don't know anything. Um, it just depends on how long people. So now, now that, and one of the, um, I think one of the, the people in this has something to do with critical role as well. Um, yeah. So I thought it was a spinoff, but I don't, I guess it's not. No, it's not. But um, as long as there are people who want this. Yeah. You know, and there's, I don't know that there's any reason for them not to want it. They might get tired of it. Who knows? Well, here's here's the question, right? It's easy to consume. All you got to do is sit there and look at it. That could be it. That could be something. It could be a, it could be a little more. I mean, Critical Role's done what two full campaigns, and they're they just started a third one. So maybe I'm dreaming. Now, would it be interesting when D and D sixth edition or their update, whatever they're going to call it, comes out, if that's not as well received? I, mean, I don't think that'll matter. Oh, really? I don't think that'll matter. I think okay. at this point, Critical Role is its own phenomenon. So they could even probably switch. Well, I mean, there's some, I'm sure there is some. They play Deadlands. Yeah, I'm sure there is some, like, I can't wait to see how they do this game element in their thing. There's probably sure. some um, bit of that going on, but I'm not sure how much because nah, I'm not I'm not plugged into that thing. Right. So well, we have friends that love it. We have several groups of friends that really like it. Uh, several people, I should say. And I think they will stay with them for as long as they produce because they really like stories. So now that I think about it, I think I'm going to have to withdraw my statement because D&D fans love stories and they do tell engaging stories because they're actors and actresses. They can do voices and they I mean. You could, when I say they do tell engaging stories, I could see someone enjoying it. Right. I right. don't, but. You know. But we're not their audience. There's other we're people with their audience. I and mean, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let's move into the uh, main topic tonight. And we're going to revisit something that I know we've mentioned. One, one, just to nope. belabor nope. the point. Absolutely not. The reason no. I brought it up was the article so much, not the, uh, oh, the okay. show itself. Okay. It's a, it's a problem with gaming articles online that they they're pretty much full of nothing <laughs> especially well, the likes of polygon well polygon and a few of the others are shields for hasbro and wizard or wizard of the coast right so then they say strict is going to be the greatest book ever something beyond the witch light is the best D, &D book ever are you kidding me right stuff barely qualifies as a D, D book right so yeah whatever so game reporting sucks is what I'm saying. Well, they don't really report. A lot of them don't report. They just, the ones we see related to D&D, &D, you got to, if you're not a butt kisser, you know, you don't get as much of the goods early, I guess. So um, we had a, like I, you know, I did that review, um, which should be coming up pretty soon. I found out uh, that our buddy, Chris, who did Ancour, um Kingdom of the Gods, uh -huh. uh, Pundit reviewed it. And gave him a decent review. Pundit's pretty harsh. I gave him a good review. I liked it. I'm looking forward to my book when I when I get it. But um, you know, we're I'm happy to do reviews, but I'm not gonna be like, and I told Chris too, I'm not gonna be like, just because I like you doesn't mean I'm gonna just give a good positive review, even though I did because I actually thought it was pretty cool. Um, whether it be something I would play in long term, I don't know, but it had a lot of elements that I think a lot of people will like for a science fantasy game. Right. Yeah. So Anyway, All right. Shall we move on now? Let us Set move on. Set my All piece. Right. 
We're not really blasting the, the guys that played it. We're just saying the articles in general suck when they come to things like this.